episode 7 of Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how I built and how I constructed my Energized Toolbox, or as I've nicknamed it, the Voltomatic. So what does an Energized Toolbox do? It's basically a portable container that has batteries and a power inverter in it to generate 120 volts AC. This one in particular has 700, a 750 watt capacity, which is around 6.5 amps, and it outputs a modified sine wave signal because it is based on a modified sine wave power inverter. So I'll show you on the surface. It's, uh, it has a voltage, voltage display for the battery, tells you how much charge is left. 12.6 volts is the maximum charge. Uh, 10.5 volts would be the minimum at which the inverter turns itself off. Now you could theoretically discharge the batteries further than that, but I will get into why I don't do that later on. So, in keeping with the style of the old kind of uh, vintage retro metal box, I used a couple of old, uh, an old tandem receptacle. Now, I didn't just include this for the style of it, I also didn't necessarily want a ground pin connected to the inverter's ground, because modified sine wave inverters generally split the voltage between the hot and the neutral based, uh, based on the ground pin being at the middle, the center tab which puts 60 volts between the ground and either one of these pins. And that is not necessarily a great thing for all devices. Some devices will not like having 60 volt difference between each uh, leg and the ground. So I figured because this is reasonably well isolated from earth, since it's probably not going to be sitting directly on a metal grounded surface, it would be relatively safe to just float the ground using one of these ground adapters like this. Now, if you go inside, you can see there is a small neon bulb, which you could probably see through the front panel, indicating whether or not the inverter underneath is active. Now, as you can see on the, on the top here, I have two rather large lithium polymer batteries. These are model airplane batteries made by a company called Zop Power, and these are actually basically the cheapest large lithium batteries you can get on eBay. And I wasn't expecting a whole lot of performance out of them initially. They were only around, I think, $30 or $40 a pack, which is not that bad for batteries that are 10 amp hour at 11.1 .1 volts per pack. Now I have these connected in parallel to the lugs of the power inverter. And of course, I have them also connected to a built-in balance charger. Now the purpose of the balance charger is to make sure that when the batteries are being recharged, they don't ever get where one cell is charged to a higher voltage than the other, or one gets overly discharged. Now I don't have an explicit battery management system to keep the batteries from being deeply discharged, and in fact I did almost deeply discharge them on accident one time using the outputs on the back, which I will show you in a second. However, this battery charger will not recharge the batteries if any one of the cells are below the nominal minimum voltage of about three volts per cell. If that's the case, it'll just refuse to charge, which is a good safety precaution because deeply discharging lithium polymer batteries can cause them to become unstable, puff up, or even catch fire when they're being recharged. Now these batteries, uh, according to my measurements, are actually holding about 92% of their rated capacity, which for cheap batteries on eBay is not that bad of a track record. That's a pretty good thing. So these are actually reasonably good batteries and I would recommend buying Zop Power batteries uh, if you end up uh, working on a project such as this. As to, power, as to how I'm powering the tandem receptacle, I have uh, basically a piece of 18 gauge lamp cord running down to the inverter's output, which is supplying power to it. The hope, of course, would be that nobody sticks their fingers in and uh, accidentally shocks themselves on that, but as long as the lid stays closed and someone who's competent, can t uh, competent to use it operates it, that shouldn't be an issue. Here you have a two-pole, I have a two-pole toggle switch for turning the power on and off. The first pole simply turns this uh, little display on and off here, but the second pole is actually wired to the inside of the inverter. I had to take the power, uh, Chicago Electric 750 watt power inverter apart in order to actually install the switching to the power inverter. Uh, it, I had to actually reconfigure the control circuitry a bit to actually allow me to use my switch because they had a dual pole switch built in to the control circuit in this power inverter. Now, as I mentioned, this is a Chicago Electric, which is the Harbor Freight brand, 750 watt power inverter under here. And I wasn't sure if it was actually going to perform that well because it is a cheap inverter, but I've actually been using this thing for six months through some pretty intense duty uh, use, and it has been very reliable. The uh, Chicago Electric Power Inverter has not had any problems. 
As to the construction of the actual chassis, I have vent holes for the inverter on both sides so it can suck air through and blow air out the other side. And I have on the back a 12 volt DC output, my input, which uh, the balance charger can take anything from 11 to 18 volts for the input. And I have what's called an EC5 connector, which is a high current uh, battery hookup connector. And this can incidentally be connected to a set of jumper cables. So I'm not going to give a demonstration for this toolbox uh, powering uh, starting a car, but I have proven once that it will start a car. In a later video, I'll actually show a much smaller battery doing the same thing. Not one that I built, but one that I purchased on Amazon. I'll do a product re review on that in the future. Now, in addition to the engine crank plug, I also have the 12 volt DC output. Now, I've made this little adapter that fits nicely inside the storage area of the toolbox, and it has a uh, an accessory plug connector for a car. You plug it in here and it makes an adapter and gives you 12 volts. Now this is a USB power adapter that I can insert into here like so and get USB power out from here regardless of whether the inverter is off or on. And last thing I'll go over about this thing is its construction. It's made out of a metal box because I wanted to have it reasonably fireproof in the event of battery failure. If one of these batteries puffs up or, uh, or vents flame, I want to make sure that the box is go not going to contribute to that fire. Now, obviously, it's not the strongest of box, and the lid could potentially pop off. Flame could exit through the side holes. But the point is, of course, to keep it somewhat contained in the event of a failure. So that would be, of course, the metal, uh, the metal box. And, of course, that's why another reason why I used it is because it looks quite cool. You can see the bolts on the front being used to hold the inverter down and keep everything in place. The lithium polymer batteries are mounted to the inverter with a couple of big heavy zip ties and there's a bit of rubber here for strain relief so the zip ties don't gouge into the battery and cause problems. Overall, you can see it's basically been uh, constructed from parts you can get at the hardware store or on eBay and it was really a fun project to build and if you want a versatile source of power that you can take pretty much anywhere, this is a great option for you. This one in particular is actually quite powerful. I will demonstrate the performance of it with this Makita, oh, Makita 5 amp electric hammer drill. So if I plug this in here, you see it works quite well. The voltage only drops a little bit, but uh, the drill runs perfectly fine. That's because the inverter is rated up to 750 watts or around six and a half amps. It runs the drill quite comfortably. So besides this thing, I'll also show you another one of my projects that uh, I built shortly after building this toolbox, which was effectively a mini toolbox. Now this mini toolbox I designed with a smaller 100 watt inverter and a five amp hour battery, giving it a quarter of the uh, energy storage of the larger toolbox. However, it's very compact because you can, uh, the, the balance charger is not inside of it, meaning that the only things in it are the battery, the inverter, and of course the connectors for other uh, peripherals such as this 12 volt uh, automotive accessory plug. And as I said, the output for this, or the input charger for this thing is external. You have to plug it in separately and press the buttons on the blue charger outside of it. It can be charged, of course, with the exact same charger that is in here. This is the Lipro Balance Charger. And I have another one specifically for this one that's outside of it. Connected with a custom cable, it allows me to charge it from pretty much anywhere when I have the charger. Now, in addition to that, there's a little fan hole and some vents to keep the inverter and the battery cool when it's under load. And of course, the 100 watt power output. This one does have a ground because it was, uh, I couldn't find a good ungrounded plug with the single receptacle. And I figured I'll just, uh, just have it be grounded anyway. It's not as much of an issue for the smaller equipment. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it was informative and I, thought, I hope you uh, enjoyed seeing these projects. Uh, you can build something like this on your own if you want to. The parts, uh, of course, you can find readily at either the hardware store or online. And it's a great way to get some experience with working with power inverters and working with AC and DC power as well as uh, getting introduced to lithium polymer batteries and uh, high density battery technology in general. So thank you for watching my video and I look forward to next time. Have a good one.